Hypoglycemia can be one of the more concerning side effects of intensive diabetes management, especially when using insulin. This can be a frightening experience that can cause some really uncomfortable symptoms to some people and can potentially be life-threatening to others. That makes it one of the most important adverse events of diabetes management that we need to consider. And the only thing that can make a potentially dangerous situation even scarier is when you don't even know it's happening. Hey everyone, I'm PA David. I'm a board certified and licensed diabetes specialty PA that practices in Southern California. And Sugar High is a channel for relatable, reliable diabetes information that is easy to understand. Today, we're talking about hypoglycemia unawareness, a common situation in which everything feels fine, but it isn't. This is something that everyone at risk of hypoglycemia and every healthcare provider who treats patients with diabetes needs to know about. So let's get into it on this episode of Sugar High. Let's start by briefly reminding ourselves what hypoglycemia actually is. Hypoglycemia is defined as any glucose level below 70 milligram per deciliter or 3.9 millimole per liter, depending on which measurement standard your home country uses. If the blood sugar drops below that level, your body should sense that and will start releasing hormones to try to get the sugar to start going back up and make you feel uncomfortable so that you're aware that there's a problem. Different people will experience their own combination of symptoms at different points, but some common symptoms early on in a hypoglycemia episode are things like hunger, nervousness, trembling hands, or just feeling generally shaky, irritability, rapid heartbeat, or sweating. The hope is that this would be enough to like, you know, let you know something is wrong so that you go get something to eat. That'll hopefully bring some sugar back into your body and get back to normal glucose before there's any actual danger of brain and nerve cell damage. If the glucose keeps falling though, the symptoms can become worse as the brain starts running out of fuel and it has a hard time functioning the way that it normally would. At that point, you might begin to experience more concerning symptoms like confusion, lack of energy, sleepiness, tingling in your face or fingertips, clumsiness, and blurred vision. If the glucose continues to drop, a person may become less responsive, completely lose consciousness, and in the more severe cases, it can lead to coma and death. So then, what happens in hypoglycemia unawareness? If you've seen my video on false lows, you might recall me discussing this concept that even though there is a normal range where your blood sugar is supposed to be, your body can adapt and sort of get used to whatever your sugar is wherever you spend most of your time. If your blood sugar is like always really, really high, your body starts to accept that as normal even though it's not. Well, that can happen at the opposite side of the spectrum as well. People who experience a lot of hypoglycemia might notice that their body gradually kind of gets trained to understand that as the new normal, and you might not experience the nervousness, the shakiness, the sweating, the irritability during a mild or a moderate hypoglycemia event. It's kind of like that cartoon meme of the dog smiling while everything is burning around him and he's just like, this is fine. A person with hypoglycemia awareness might be able to check their blood sugar, see a glucose reading of 52, and just kind of shrug because they feel normal. Now, at this point, I'd imagine that some of you are probably thinking, yes, please, that sounds awesome. How do I sign up for this problem where I don't have to feel terrible when my blood sugar dips? Well, while it might sound great on the surface, we have to remind ourselves that hypoglycemia symptoms are there for a very good reason. It's kind of like the sense of pain. Imagine if you suddenly lost the sense of pain. It would probably be great for a while, but we need pain. It's how we know when our body is being damaged or harmed. If you pick up something that's too hot, it burns, it hurts, before it gets to the point where your flesh is like actually cooking, right? So that way you can do something like put it down in order to minimize the damage that actually happens. In the same way, hypoglycemia symptoms are supposed to start well before you actually get to a point of passing out so that you can do something to turn it around. People who have hypoglycemia awareness lose those early warning signs when the blood sugar starts to dip below normal. And again, while that may sound appealing if you've ever had a hypoglycemia and you've felt how uncomfortable that can be, the fact is hypoglycemia is still hypoglycemia, even if you don't feel it. 
your blood glucose is dropping and all the risks of those dangerous complications like loss of consciousness, coma, or death still exist. Only now you have a shorter window of opportunity to turn it around once you finally start to feel it. If you don't notice that you're dropping until your glucose hits like 50 or 40, you may not have time to do something before it drops just a little further and now you're at the point where you can become unresponsive. And if that were to happen while you were, say, driving, that could be devastating. So let's talk a little bit about who's at increased risk of this problem. Clearly, people who experience hypoglycemia commonly are going to be the people that this is a concern for because you have to experience hypoglycemia relatively frequently in order to get acclimated to it. Certain medications carry a higher risk of hypoglycemia than others, but the two types of diabetes meds that most commonly cause it are insulin and sulfonylureas. There's another category of type 2 diabetes medication called meglitinides. They can also cause hypoglycemia, but honestly, they're not all that commonly prescribed anymore. Since people with type 1 diabetes require insulin to manage their blood glucose, they are without a doubt the people at the greatest risk of hypoglycemia and therefore hypoglycemia unawareness. In particular, people who use insulin or sulfonylureas that are closer to the normal range have the most risk of this happening. Now, you might be wondering, what are you talking about? Wouldn't it be good for somebody to have glucose that's more normal more often? Well, yeah, that's what we want. But the fact is, if your glucose starts off really high and then we bring it back down to normal, that's good. But the closer you get to normal, now there's more of a chance that it may actually go past that and go down too low. And now you're at risk of hypoglycemia. If your glucose is like always in the 200s and 300s, that's not good either. That's going to cause other problems but you're not gonna have this particular problem if you're not even reaching normal, much less dropping below normal frequently enough to get acclimated. You see what I mean? Let me give you an example of this happening. This is a continuous glucose monitor tracing of one of my actual patients. She gave me her permission to use it in this video, but I'm still not gonna say her name just in the interest of her privacy. She uses insulin through a pump for type 1 diabetes. And when you look at her average sugar and her GMI, which is sort of like this estimation of what your A1C would be, she looks like she's doing really well. The average glucose is only 104. GMI is 5.8. And that would normally be really great until we look a little closer and we see that this is happening at the expense of really frequent hypoglycemia. 27% of the time over the past two weeks, this gal has been hypoglycemic. 27% of the time corresponds to almost two full days out of every week in the hypoglycemia range. That's dangerous. But when I suggested that we make some adjustments to the insulin settings, she was kind of hesitant because she was a little nervous about her glucose running too high. She'd gotten to a point where she felt absolutely fine when her glucose was that low. Nonetheless, she was actually in a very precarious situation that could turn bad very suddenly. Thankfully, we did make some adjustments and she's doing much better now, still with really good numbers throughout the day, but without all that hypoglycemia. In addition to insulin using people in the lower glucose range, people with chronic kidney disease, advanced age, alcohol consumption, infections, and a longer duration of diabetes are all at greater risk of this phenomenon. So now that we've discussed what this is, if hypoglycemia awareness sounds like your situation, you're probably wondering what can you do about it? If you're having actual hypoglycemia readings without warning symptoms, step one is to accept that even though you might feel fine, if your sugar's low, you're not fine. Understand that hypoglycemia is still hypoglycemia whether you feel it or not, and there are certain inherent dangers associated with glucose that's too low. You're not always going to be able to rely on how you feel when determining your sugar. So you're going to want to start checking your blood glucose a lot more frequently. Think of it like a pilot flying in the fog. They can't see where they're going, so they have to rely on their instruments. In the same way, you're going to have to rely on your instruments to measure your glucose. In addition to the typical three or four daily glucose checks that we'd normally recommend for somebody using insulin or otherwise at risk for hypoglycemia, you're going to also want to check before driving, 
before operating any heavy machinery, before using power tools, before and during exercise or any other activity that could potentially put you in danger if your glucose level suddenly dropped and your level of consciousness is suddenly altered. Now, you can do this with a traditional finger stick glucose monitor, but you would need a tremendous amount of test strips and that's an awful lot of finger posts to deal with every day. Most people have a really hard time keeping up with that. Instead, I would highly recommend a continuous glucose monitor like the Dexcom, the Freestyle Libre, Medtronic Guardian or Simplera or Eversense. In my opinion, this really is the way to go for anyone using insulin and especially for people experiencing hypoglycemia unawareness. These devices monitor your glucose all day long and they track not only the level of your glucose but also the direction that it's moving. Pretty much all of them will alert you if your glucose gets too low and some can even warn you when it predicts that you're about to have a severe hypoglycemia even before it's happened. This is such a huge benefit and can be an absolute game changer for someone who is going low but wouldn't otherwise know it. All right, next, you're gonna wanna have some sort of hypoglycemia treatment standing by and available anytime you might need it. Most of the time, hypoglycemia can be quickly fixed by eating or drinking something that has sugar in it. I'd recommend having something that's non-perishable and easy to grab in a hurry so that you can get to it without any like potential delay. Hard candies are great because they're easy to put by your bedside or carry with you or you can even leave them in your vehicle. Lifesavers are a great example and that's just a perfect name for something like that. Juice boxes are also a really great way to go because they don't need to be refrigerated and drinking something with sugar in it is probably one of the quickest ways to get that glucose into your system. Make sure that your family members know what your emergency sugar source is and where it is in case you need help getting it when the moment comes. For more severe episodes of hypoglycemia, every person using insulin really should have a prescription for something called glucagon. The American Diabetes Association advocates for anybody using insulin to have it on hand, but you do need a prescription for it, and I'm gonna be honest, we healthcare providers are not that great about prescribing it as often as we should. If you use insulin and your provider hasn't mentioned glucagon to you, ask them about it. You deserve to have this standing by. Glucagon is the natural hormone that your pancreas makes to bring your glucose back up. It's basically like the opposite of insulin. If your hypoglycemia is mild and you're awake and alert and you're able to safely drink some juice, that's great. That's where you should start. But if someone is unconscious, pouring juice down their throat is a really bad idea because they're not alert enough to swallow safely. It could end up going down their airway and we don't want somebody to choke. Glucagon is available as a preloaded injector pen or a nasal spray that just about anybody can easily administer. This stuff will trigger your liver to release all the extra glucose it stores inside it and it's really effective at turning hypoglycemia around in a pretty short amount of time. Like I said, this is something that would be to treat a severe hypoglycemia if someone is not able to take in sugar or carbohydrate by mouth. So it's more commonly something that a friend or family member would do for you rather than something that you would give yourself. And for that reason, again, it's really important that your family knows what it is, where it is, and how to use it. Please have that conversation with your family because it's worth it. It'll make such a difference in how quickly they'll be able to help you. Here is some good news. You can actually reverse this situation. It is possible to resensitize your body to hypoglycemia by letting your glucose ride in the higher range for a little while. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying stop your insulin and crank your sugar up to 600 for a month. That's gonna put you in the hospital with ketoacidosis. But with the guidance of your diabetes healthcare provider, adjusting your insulin or medication doses to stay out of the hypoglycemia range for even a few weeks can start to remind your body where your glucose level belongs. Eventually, those warning symptoms can start to return at a more appropriate level and allow you to protect yourself earlier on in a glucose dip. I can't really say exactly what target range you should personally shoot for when trying to resensitize. That's something that has to be totally individualized with the help of your own healthcare provider. But just to give you a general idea of what I found successful, I often suggest that most, not all, of my patients suffering with hypoglycemia unawareness try to start running in the mid to upper 100s for a few weeks. 
Once they start acclimating to that new glucose range, then we can start adjusting their doses to gradually bring them back down into the perfect range that's more consistent with their long-term goals. So guys, that's your introduction to hypoglycemia unawareness. I know that in every video, I always say that, I hope you found this information helpful, but this is one of those topics where I honestly feel that if this video helps even one person to improve their situation and live more safely, it'll have been worth making it. Share with me in the comments if you've ever been in a situation of having low blood glucose and not feeling it. I'm really interested to read what your experiences have been. If you did find this information helpful, I would sure appreciate a simple click of the like button and I hope that you'll consider subscribing. My goal is to help as many people as I can with this channel and your interactions really do help to drive that. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.